Well, what better way to come back after a little layoff than to talk to Brian Cranston? What a great promo that is as far as all the baseball stuff is concerned. I'm not going to call him more to White. I'll ask him a question about that a little later on. We're going to start with baseball. Brian, nice to talk. Christopher Russo, how are you today? Okay? Thanks, Mad Dog. Good to be with you. Always a pleasure. Two things growing up in L.A. in the 60s. One, the Beatles. Two, Vince Scully. One after another. Let me hear your thoughts on both. It really helped you out. Go ahead. Let me hear. Unbelievable. I mean, I, the first Dodger game I went to was in 1961 at the L.A. Coliseum. I don't really remember much of it. I was five and a half years old. But I did remember one name, Wally Moon because i knew that wow. association so it was incredible to me that there was a player named moon and later on i named my production company moonshot because that's what wally's expertise was hitting the little chip shots up and over the netting in the la coliseum and then in 1962 when dodger stadium opened my dad took my brother and i in that first year i was six and now i'm 68 and we shot the promos for the MLB spots at Dodger Stadium at night. I was the only person there, really. I'm standing on the mound in pitch dark around me with the light shining down. It was just magical. Thought you were Sandy Koufax. How about him and Drysdale there, Brian, with you? You know, as a young teenager, which is a perfect time to be a great baseball fan, having those two, 63 beating the Yankees, 65 twins, 66 Orioles. Right around that time when you really can't get enough of it. How about that? Let me hear. Can't get enough. And they're two very different pitchers, not just lefty and righty, but Sandy was a kind of a, he, he would move the ball around a lot. He would... You know, through beautiful uh, off-speed pitches and things. Um, Drysdale was a, 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 an animal. He, the first thing he would do is intimidate a batter, come right up and hit a little chin music. He'd go right after you. Um, it was, and he was just a bull worker. Um, but to have those two, one and two, my God, it was some good years right in the middle of the 60s. Uh, fun times. Sure was. Scully there and the Beatles. I know you're a huge Beatles fan. Uh, Ed Sullivan, February of 64. You probably remember like it was yesterday. Give me a little rundown there before we do a little Walter White. Go ahead. Let me hear. Well, you, you know, I, my parents, you know, were listening to this young group and it's like they couldn't believe it. It's like, well, what are they doing? They're gyrating around. Look at this. And my brother and I were like, oh, my God, you're seeing the next move. And sure enough, it just exploded. Uh, the, 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 it, we'd never seen anything like that. Before that, it was Ricky Nelson and Pat Boone, and everything was soft and sweet in the 50s music. And this just exploded. The 60s was the most explosive decade there was. You know, uh, the, the Vietnam War, the landing on the moon, sexual freedom was going on. It was just unbelievable. Um, and and Vince Scully was and remains my hero. He's still in my voice, the voice of the Dodgers since they were long ago in Brooklyn. And for my entire childhood into late into my adulthood, he was still there in my in my in my my psyche and my being. I will always uh, keep him in the highest of the echelons. In fact, He's, I'm such a fan of his that I named my dog Vin Scully. Oh, wow. So Wally Moon and Vin Scully for Brian Cranston. I like that. Little moon shots down a left field line. All right. How about the, um, let's do a little movie stuff. Saving Private Ryan. I don't mean, I love the movie with Hanks. Big, that was a good part for you. Give me a little rundown about that role, which was a sort of a documentary, but a lot of great stars in it, including the guy who played Roger Maris in the 61. Let's not forget that. But a wonderful film. Tell me about that for a sec. Go ahead. Let me hear his name was Barry Pepper, lovely guy, uh, great Pepper. actor. Yep. Yeah, I did a I did a pilot with him. Um, I played the the one arm colonel in in Saving Private Ryan, which which set the the pilot uh, the plot going. So the the captain came to me and said, "This is the problem," and and then I took it to the general. Uh, the, what I remember most from playing that role is I just had the one arm, and Steven Spielberg, who was directing, I said I had an idea that my guy has to learn how to deal with 
life with one arm. So he had he's reading a document on his desk, but he's stirring his tea. He taps his spoon, drops it on the saucer. I exchange it to this and I place it down and then to pick up my paperwork. <laughs> I worked on that for hours just to make sure it looked right. <laughs> And he came in and said, that's a good idea. We're not going to do that, but that's a good, a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> you, you tried it, but he didn't want to do it. All right, did you know when you did the early sessions of uh, Breaking Bad, did you have any idea that it would go down as one of the all-time great series? 62 of them, what a great show. Did you sense greatness right away with that, Brian? Let me hear. Go ahead. What I, what I knew was that it was, a, it was an incredibly well-written show. And if we execute the acting and the production well, it has a chance to be a, a really good show. But you never go in uh, into it thinking you're making a classic or you're going to make. And uh, we're, we, it was a job. Um, we we're all trying to do our best. And just like um, players, you know, going into the major leagues, you just hope you get a shot at it. Do you think you're going to be, you know, into the Hall of Fame? Maybe, but you know, that's just so, it's such a pipe dream and your performance in that is going to dictate. It's not up to you whether you make the Hall of Fame, it's up to the writers and it's up to your your stats. So you just have to keep your nose down, do your work. And uh, if they tap you on the shoulder and say, hey, good job, we think you should be in the Hall of Fame or whatever, a win an award, well then that's fantastic. But you can't use that as as the goal. You know, a sign of a great actor like yourself who can do a role like that and still has other things that he's remembered for. You know, Carol O'Connor was great as Archie Bunker, but he was also great in Heat of the Night, that show he did five or six years later. Gandolfini, uh, you know, was great in Sopranos, but he was also a very good actor. You have had other roles on top of Walter White, which also cements you as an all-timer. I mean, you were great in your honor. That was a great, uh, you were phenomenal, the poor judge there in New Orleans who can't get out of his own way with the poor kid with the, with the death. I mean. So you have been able to separate other things besides Walter White, and that's hard to do for such a tremendous performance in a great role, and you've been able to do it. Talk about that for a sec. Let me hear. Well, I, before, uh, before Breaking Bad came along, I, I was on a sit sitcom called Malcolm in the Middle for seven years, playing a sweet, right. goofy dad. And so when Vince Gilligan, who created Breaking Bad, said, I want Brian Cranston for the role of Walter White. The studio and the network said, whoa, whoa, whoa wait a minute, that, that sweet, goofy dad from uh, Malcolm in the Middle, no, that's not Walter White. And he was my champion to get that role because he said, no, he's an actor. This is what they do. They, he, it's more than one dimension. He can do this. Trust me on this. He's the one I want. And so without someone being in my corner like that, you don't know what's going to happen. I think it's like a like a ball player. You have to have your coaches and managers all along the way believe in you and help you get out of your own way sometimes to be able to achieve what you are destined to become. Yeah, so right, let's do Dodgers for a sec. You're still a big fan. Obviously, the two games in Seoul, getting ready for their opener at home against the Cardinals. A lot of pressure on them, Brian. And they're in a situation right now where it's almost like their season starts in October. I mean, because no matter what occurs, if they have the great year and lose in the first round of the playoffs with Otani and Yamamoto, they're going to be looked at almost as a failure. That's a very tough thing for a ball club to deal with, and there's some truth to that. Let me get you a sense. Go ahead. You know, it always comes down to when you're talking about playoffs in any sport, it comes down to two things. Uh, what team is getting hot and who is the healthiest? And th that's it. You know, I mean, it, it, your your core talent is your core talent. Look at the Arizona Diamondbacks last year. They were an OK team throughout the season. They got hot at the end. They got into the playoffs as a as a wild card. And they end up in the World Series. Um, that's you know they 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 took it good for them. Um, but so it, it it remains who's hot and who stays healthy. And if the Dodgers can stay healthy throughout this very long season, and they happen to stay hot and keep that motivation going, <clears throat> they have a chance. But I agree with you. 
The expectations are high. With the team they've assembled now, they need to take care of business and hopefully they stay healthy. That's the knocking on wood for me, is hopefully they stay healthy and then we'll see them in the, in the World Series. And you're a big sports fan, right, Brian? You like all the sports? I mean, is it just bad? I know you do the great job for us with the baseball, but you seem to be a very big sports fan. Is that correct? It is. I mean, but I'm a homer. I mean, I'm born and raised in Los Angeles, so I'm a Lakers, Kings fan. I'm a Rams fan. So it's all of those things uh, connected to Los Angeles. Uh, but I love sports. It's... Um, it's, you know, it, you know it, back in the day when man was still in a cave, he used to go out and, and, and kill a mammoth, you know, it's like, and they made sport out of it. Well, we don't do that anymore. So we have to have fun and competition. You know, men are, are generally just competitive with each other. And it, it, as long as you can keep it in, in a healthy way, it's, it's a lot of fun, whether you're, you know, playing uh, you know, a dollar a hole in golf, or or you're betting on uh, on the outcome. Or here we go, March Madness coming up. How exciting is that? Oh, we love every minute of it. We love this spot too, Brian. Don't disappear. Great job with the promos. Uh, you've given America a lot of fun with all these roles. Thanks for a few minutes here today. Keep it going. Thank you, Chris.